Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how I like to create spoil boards for my 3018 CNC machine. As many of you know, creating a spoil board was one of my main motivators for upgrading this machine in the first place. By slightly increasing the height of the gantry, I'm able to gain that little bit of distance so that I can implement a spoil board and not lose any Z travel distance on the Z axis. Before we get into it, remember this is just how I like to do it. There's no real correct way and everybody kind of has their own personal preference. So you're gonna need a few things to do this. The first one obviously just being a piece of wood cut to the size of your CNC bed. Mine is 300 millimeters by 180 millimeters and a depth of 20 millimeters. You'll also need a surfacing bit for your CNC machine. This one has a one inch cutting diameter and if you want to use my G-code, you'll have to use the same size. You'll also need a two millimeter flat end mill for milling the holes. Also ensure that you have the right size collets for all the bits that you'll need to use. To secure the spoil board to the bed, you'll need 12 of these M6 T-slot nuts along with 12 20 millimeter M6 cap head bolts. Although keep in mind that the length of the bolt will depend on the thickness of your spoil board. Next thing I did was measure up the bed of the CNC machine and create a model of my spoil board in Fusion 360. All you're essentially doing is modeling up a piece of wood and then marking out where you want the holes to be. And if you've measured everything correctly, it'll just make everything easier when it comes to fitting the spoil board and making the cuts. As you can see, I've gone for 12 holes here with recesses for those cap head bolts. Underneath, we've just got those standard M6 bolts so that the bolt can go through and tighten up to those T-slot nuts. So what is a spoil board and why might you need one in the first place? For me personally, one of the main advantages is having the ability to do full depth cuts on pretty much the full scale of the machine bed. And if you've worked with clamps before, you'll know that it's quite annoying, you know, they always get in the way and you tend to lose quite a lot of workspace just having to use the clamps alone. The spoil board opens up so many more options to you in terms of securing your stock workpiece to the bed of the machine. This is awesome for me because it means I can work on larger projects and longer cuts. From here, I was able to go into the manufacturer workspace and generate two tool paths that I'd be using to create the spoil board. The first one is a 2D pocket, and I'll speed it up a little bit. You'll see what the machine is gonna do. It's gonna go around and drill out all those holes for the cap head bolts. For this particular example, I'm gonna go and drill out the M6 holes by hand. We'll create the holes for the cap head bolts, which will give us a perfect guide as to where those holes need to be. It's just much quicker, and it means we don't have to do a two-sided cut. The final tool path will be a facing procedure. So if I simulate this one, as you can see, I've modeled up the bits here in Fusion 360. And just to show you, if I open up the tool library and I show you the tools for this project, you can see there exactly what I'm using in terms of measurements. So I've got the two millimeter flat end mill and the one inch diameter surfacing bit. So if I simulate that, you can see exactly what it's gonna do. It's just gonna go across the top of the spoil board and we're gonna use this as a method of flattening up the top and making sure it's very level with the machine. For the surfacing tool path, you can see here what I've done is I've set it to take off half a millimeter from the top of the board. And I've set increments here over in my passes at multiple depths of 0.1 millimeter. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take away that half a millimeter, 0.1 millimeters at a time. You can take off a lot more than that, and I did that in the video, but I just wanted to put that in there so you can experiment with it and take layers off slowly if you want to. Also worth making a note here of my work coordinate system. I've got my stock origin point here at the bottom left. I've got my z-axis going up and pretty standard my x is left to right and the y-axis is back to front. All the g-code and this Fusion 360 project will be available to my website members so if you want to download it to make your life easier you can go and do that. One thing I've always liked to do before making any cuts is to do a dummy run of the cut to ensure that the g-code is doing what we expect it to do. We're all human and it's easy to make a mistake and depending on the material that you're cutting, sometimes this can be costly. You can do these dummy runs just by setting your z-axis zero point way higher than it needs to be. As you can see here, the spindle is off, but you can see that the machine is doing what we expect and that it's going to the holes and doing the motions it needs to make the cuts. I also did a dummy run for the facing procedure as well. 
One thing I'd recommend before doing these cuts on the 3018 CNC is to disable any hard and soft limits that you may have in place with limit switches. Because we're cutting at the absolute maximum X and Y dimensions of the machine, you'll need to disable limit switches so that we can have our full travel distance. Next up, we're gonna need a way to secure the spoil board to the bed of the machine. I've used four spring clamps. They're pretty strong and it held it in place very well. As you can see, the piece of wood I'm using here for the spoil board is slightly warped. And in such a case, you'll want to make sure that the edges are warping up toward the sky. This will ensure that the bottom of the bed is flat when we bolt it down. And then we can use the facing procedure that we generated to ensure that the top of the spoil board is perfectly level with the X axis. After importing the G code into your chosen G code software platform, we're now ready to make the cuts. I used Universal G Code Sender and I'll be making another video about that next week. As you normally would, you just zero out your X, Y and Z axes with the stock origin point that I set in Fusion 360. When you're confident that the cut will be successful, fire up the spindle and press begin. So as I said, we're not gonna mill holes all the way through. What I'm gonna do is just use a standard six mil wood drill bit, and we're just gonna go straight through with a power drill. It's much easier, no double cuts, and it's quicker as well. So now we're in a position to mount the spoil board to the bed of the machine. To do this, we can use the spoil board as a bit of a guide and slide the T-slot nuts into their positions. When you've got them all roughly into their positions, we can place the spoil board on the bed and we can get the T-slot nuts into alignment by using a small Allen key. Just put the Allen key in the hole, wiggle it around, and they'll line up nicely. When everything's all in place, start to insert the bolts. When you fully tighten them, I recommend starting from the outside and working your way towards the center. This will ensure that the bottom of the spoil board is flush with the top of the bed. When you're done, ensure that all the cap head bolts are around five to six millimeters below the top surface of the spoil board. Next up, we can swap out our end mill bit for the facing bit that we'll be using to face the top surface of the spoil board. Now, once again, we can load in the G-code, zero our axes, and run the program. As you can see initially for demonstration purposes, I've just showed it taking tiny layers off the top because you may not need to take much off. In my case, I actually needed to take off around two to three millimeters. So in the end, I put on my dust boot and just let it take off two or three mil in one go. You can easily increase the depth of the cut just by setting your Z zero height a little bit lower. Once it's complete, you should be left with a nice flat surface that's level with your X axis. One final thing I wanted to talk about is how you can mount work pieces to the board without clamps. And one of the most simple ways is to use some painter's tape. Simply put down enough so that you can place your stock piece on top. You'll also want to apply the painter's tape to the back of the stock piece as well. Then you simply put down some super glue on the tape and then you can secure the workpiece down to the spoil board. This can then be easily removed by using something like a scraper. You just force it underneath the tape and the whole thing will come off. And then the tape is very easy to remove when you want to get rid of it. With this method, we can now easily do full depth cuts and we can cut out full shapes without having to worry about hitting any clamps. So that's it for this one. As I said, any models or G code that I demonstrated in this video will be available on my website to members. So if you appreciate these videos and you wanna help support the channel, head over to the website, become a member, you'll get access to all those files, and also my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. 
It really helps the channel out and I appreciate it a lot. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.